Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia. Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Oh, I do feel good. Go on, Roger. Let yourself go. Oh, yes. Give a really good yawn, Roger. We haven't a thing to do all evening. What a luxury. (laughs) You mean having not a thing to do? Can't you spend this kind of evening in the city? Certainly not. Oh, come. There are evenings in the city when you have nothing to do. But when you have nothing to do in the city, it's a catastrophe. Oh. When you're alone with nothing but a book to read, with no theater appointment or dinner date, when the evening stretches out ahead of you empty and solitary in the city, it's a terrible <laughs> crisis. <laughs> Go on. What do you mean to say, is Rogers, the minute you stay in Eastbrook with us, you're perfectly contented to be a vegetable. <laughs> not contented. Exalted. I revel in it. I enjoy my vegetableness to the utmost. Well, then why haven't you been here in weeks? If I didn't see you now and then in the office, I'd hardly, hardly know you. Now, Roger, you, you, you must come more often. And be a vegetable? Yes. <laughs> I'd love it. I think a man of my age should move to the land, David. Spend the rest of his life in contemplation and dreaming. A man of your age talks more nonsense than a man of my age. It's one of the privileges of my age. But I'll never do it. You mean contemplate? I'll never have the courage to make the break. That takes youth. More is the pity. Now, listen, you. You're perfectly contented with your life as it is. You're completely satisfied to live in New York and dine at elegant restaurants and live a stone's throw from the office, so don't give me this Blarney now. Blarney, is it? David, my boy, would that it were Blarney. Tucker here! Oh, come on in, Mr. Tucker. We're in the living room. There goes my peace and quiet. That (laughs) old man plays on my nerves like a pickle. You don't like our Mr. Tucker? I adore him. But he doesn't allow me to indulge myself in my dreams of being a farmer. He he makes me realize I'll never get out of my concrete tomb. What a way to talk. And he's so rustic. Seeing your lights burning in the living room, I knew you wished to home. Oh, hello there, Mr. Killian. So I just uh, ambled over here with some important news. Hello there, Mr. Tucker. I said hello to you. I'm merely returning the compliment. Uh, You don't have to say hello again. Oh, don't worry. I ain't aiming to. I never waste one word when two is just as good. (laughs) What's your important news, Mr. Tucker? Seems to me you're always bursting with important news. Just like a hen. My important news, like eggs, don't keep, ma'am. This here's not only important news, it's, well, it's, uh, it's, uh, I gotta say, it's, well, it's, it's gull danged important. Well, then, for heaven's sakes, out with it. Remember that there land across the road, Mr. Norton? Remember? How can I forget it? Yes. Every time I look out my window, there it is. Remember when I come over here all depressed like a flag on a windless day? Yes, because you thought they were going to build a housing development across the road. Remember how I told you that if they take that land and build houses like cracker boxes all over it, I'd head for the open way? Yes, I remember all of that. But what you knew... Easy, son, now don't rush me. Sit down, David. Put your feet up, relax. Christmas will come soon, too. Uh, What's Christmas got to do with it? Oh, nothing, nothing, Mr. Tucker. Well, what is your news? Yeah, They're on, going to build us. a housing development after all? They are not. Not over my dead body. Oh. You remember that there land across the road was owned by a man that lives past Bridgeport ways? Oh, what a dope he is. He owns such a beautiful piece of land and he goes and lives past Bridgeport ways. Who ever heard of such a thing? Well, good news. He's dead. Oh. <laughs> well, I suppose we should all get up and shout with glee because the old man is dead. Well, that ain't nothing to be so cheerful about, but it just goes to show that if a man ain't got the sense to live where the living is good, that he just plain up and dies young. Well, how old was this man, Mr. Tucker? Not a day past 75, and if he had half the sense I was born with, he'd be walking over these here meadows right this minute. Nine o'clock at night, I doubt it. Well, you ain't letting me come to the point. You're interrupting all the time just like uh, like polka dots. I'm interrupting. Well, Claudia, go on, Mr. Tucker. Yeah. Yep, he's dead. They tell me his blood started turning to stone. Hardening of the arteries. Probably had a heart of stone to start with. David, I'm going to burst. What's that there, ma'am? Speak up. If you got something to say, don't mumble. I just wanted to know what the man's hard blood had to do. Oh, well, go on, Mr. Tucker, please. I'm sorry. So, they're selling it. Selling what? Well, what do you think they're selling? 
granite monument for his headstone. If you use your brains, Mr. Killian, and you'd know what they're selling, a granite headstone. <laughs> they're selling the land. For his grave? Uh, they're selling the land across the road, the estate, oh, as they oh, call it. Oh. They're selling the land. You mean the estate is selling the estate? I've always wondered why they call it an estate. Uh, which one? The estate. Oh, Oh, that a steak. Yes. Oh, you young'uns making jokes. The news I gave you ain't sunk deeper than a chicken scratching for corn. <laughs> yes, the news you told us has sunk in, but so what? They're selling the land, so what? That means you can buy it. We can buy it? Sure, you're aiming to buy more land, ain't you? Ain't just going to set on these here acres you got, are you? Well, 78 acres seems plenty to set on. I say you can't set on 78 acres all your life. You got to buy more land. Why? Well, b- because that's the pattern of things. Well, it may be the pattern of things, but it's not in the finance of things, I'm afraid. You mean to say you're going to let their, that their beautiful property across the road go to waste? Oh, somebody will buy it. Yeah, maybe somebody will. Sure, somebody will buy it. They'll build an uh, aquarium on there, a skyscraper or something. Somebody might buy it, but that there somebody might not be a man to raise corn or plant his, his field with corn or farm his land or have cows. That That's why I say you you got to buy it. A man... Well, a man who's got respect for our way of life, who ain't going to sell us down to civilization for a million dollars. Wait a minute. I know how you feel, Mr. Tucker, but there's certain things that are just out of reach. We can't afford to buy a a square foot of it. We just have to sit here and pray that the person who can afford to buy it will be a person who wants to abide by our way of life. That's all we You're giving up? No, I'm not giving up. I've been given up. I haven't inherited a million dollars. I haven't found an oil well in my backyard. I haven't made a fortune on the stock market. I haven't even, well, I I haven't even saved up enough money to build my wife a breakfast porch. And you want me to buy 50 acres of land. Don't look so sad. Maybe you haven't made a million dollars or struck a fortune, but I've hate an oil well in my backyard. I don't trust getting rich on stocks, and so I don't look so sad. I don't look sad, and I don't feel sad. I just... I want Mr. Tucker to realize that in spite of myself, we just simply can't afford 50 more acres of land. I uh, wish I could. Wish I had the strength to raise a herd of cows. It would be so fine I'd be a Croesus overnight. I wish I had enough hot blood to run around in my veins that I could scurry around this county to raise the money to buy that land. I wish I had enough years left ahead of me to make any gamble I need to make, knowing I had the time to pay it off just so as I could buy that land. The thing what gets into a man's blood if he's been born and raised and lived a farmer for 86 years, he, he just don't like to see a fine piece of meadow land bought for other purposes. It's like taking a perfectly good right arm and not using it for anything practical. Well, sorry I come over and disturbed you. Oh, Mr. Tucker, don't talk like that. No, oh, every now and then a circumstance comes up and shakes me by the shoulder and makes me look at myself and want to see it. Don't make me happy. What I see is a tired old man ambling down a few lean years, stepping cautious for fear he'll break a bone, looking neither to the right nor to the left for fear he'd stray off the path, huddling himself up, saving his last few precious hours. Dang it, I I, I don't like it. I won't have none of it. By ginger, if I had half the spirit I had at your age, I'd sell my false teeth and buy me that acreage. By heck, I, I need them false choppers. I need them bad. Good night. Good night, Mr. Tucker. I'll see you to the door, Mr. I'll Tucker. see myself to the door, son. And the day I can't see myself to the door, I'm going to pull that granite monument over my head. Stay where you are. Don't take nothing I said as an insult, because I guess I was just talking at myself most of the time. Anyway. Oh, it's so wonderful not to be old. What's so wonderful about it? Mr. Tucker is over 50 years older than we are, but it looks as if we're in the same boat. (laughs) Roger, you hadn't said a word in hours. Haven't I? No. I hadn't noticed. Been sitting there like a sphinx. Then what is my riddle? I know what your riddle is. I wouldn't doubt it. Somebody tell me, please. David, I'll lend you the money. I don't want to be lending any money, thank you. I owe enough money as it is. Oh, you don't owe much money. You only owe the mortgage. That's all I want to owe. You know, David's very conservative about owing money. I don't mind owing money so much. I just hate having debts. I don't know why you won't borrow the money from me. After all, I am your partner. I'm your friend. 
Why, I, I consider myself almost a part of this family. Oh, you've done enough for us already, Roger. You made me a partner in your firm. You helped us buy this farm. You've been a great friend, Roger. Anything I've done for you, I've done for myself. So don't worry. This time I'd really now, like to help you. Don't ask me, Roger, because I'll only keep saying no. Now, don't ask him, Roger. You know David as well as I do, so don't ask him, please. Then borrow the money from our firm. Set up a purely business proposition. Pay the loan off as you can. I won't be able to pay it off. That's the whole point. I'm paying the interest on the mortgage and working this farm and keeping the house going. And we have a baby, don't forget. I'm just about keeping up with myself. It's a heavy load. <laughs> so, that's that for now. But, Mr. Killian, it strikes me that a few minutes ago you were talking about retiring to the land. Why don't you buy it? Yes, I talked about it. Talked about it a long time. I just never did anything about it. Even when I had the strength and the courage. Instead, I led you to buy this farm... And instead, now, I'd do anything I could to help you buy that land. But as for myself, David, I've gone too long a ways. My life has taken its mold. Just look at it out the window, stretching across and across and across. Beautiful, rolling land. Some stranger's going to buy it. Yep. That's life. You know... I was perfectly happy until I found out I wanted that land. Now that I can't have it, I'm as sad as a Russian wolfhound. Oh, that's a lovely disposition you have. And you? Same. <laughs> Isn't it awful to want something most after you find out you can't have it? Yep. Oh, well, let's go to bed and forget it. Yes, so. If I can. <laughs> so this is your idea of an evening in the country with nothing to do. An evening when nothing is supposed to happen and life stands still, hmm? Well, nothing has happened, nothing at all. Nothing except two young people I know have developed a big appetite for 50 acres of land and now must deny themselves the dish. I don't call that nothing. Well, what do you call it, Roger? I call it a big slice of life, a very generous portion of experience for an evening when nothing at all was the fare written on the menu. This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. When you enter the lobby of a movie theater these days, one of the first things to greet your eyes is a sign that says, Ice Cold Coca-Cola. Now you can add a gala note to your movie going when you pause for a refreshing Coke before or after the show. And treat your guests to refreshment as well as entertainment. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. (laughs) ¶¶